Welcome to Intech, my name is Luke and in today's episode we're going to be covering part 5 which is the Power BI visualization of our data engineering end-to-end -end project in Azure. Now in previous episodes we covered the business request as to why you would even do a project like this, the basic architecture, we set up an on-prem SQL database, the services here for the pipeline, data factory, data lake, data bricks and synapse for the extract transform and load and then the setting up of power bi which was actually in the first episode so if you want to follow along go and watch those episodes there'll be a card above or a link in the description today we're focusing on power bi and tomorrow subscribe for this next episode tomorrow we're going to be doing the triggering for the pipeline so how are we going to make this pipeline automatically run every day with the most up-to-date data so we'll show you that tomorrow and look into the Active Directory as well, so that the relevant people have the relevant levels of access depending on their team or role or group. So without further ado, let's get into Power BI. So in episode one, I show you how to set up your Power BI because you do need a works email. However, there is a workaround, links in the description of that video on how to do it. Now you can see here as well, app.powerbi.com. If you go on there, you can only change things such as like filters etc so you can only interact with dashboards you can't actually make dashboards from scratch so for that you do need the app and for the app you do have to have a windows machine now you can try and virtualize it which is a bit of a nightmare so honestly you're probably best to use tableau if you're gonna not have a windows machine but best thing to do is to install it and sign up via the link in that there so anyway in power bi Let's open it up. And this will be the home screen, and we want to open up a blank report. Now, for this blank report, we need data. So let's go up to the top ribbon and we'll go to get data. And in here, we want to select more. And when that loads up, we search in Azure. You see, there's a variety of sources we can link to. Now, what we want to select is Azure Synapse Analytics SQL because we want to get the data from there. So if we click on that, we'll click connect and some settings will come up and it will say which server is it and which database is it, which is optional. For us, it's that GoDB database from the previous episode. Oops. But for the server name, if we go back to Chrome, da, 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 we go to the resource group, we go to Synapse, and it's the same SQL endpoint as last time. So settings, properties, serverless SQL endpoint copy. Go back to Power BI, paste that in here, and we'll click OK. And here we want to authenticate with our Microsoft account. So let's sign in. This will pop up, you can just sign in as whichever email you are using for your portal. Click connect. And then this will load the data up. Now, as you can see here, it's loading all of the tables. What you can do is you can either load this data or you can transform it. If you transform it, essentially you're creating a series of steps in which the data will always go through whenever it gets updated. So in this example here, if you were to actually transform this data, you could rearrange columns, change types, rename columns, whatever it may be. It can be quite handy. But for us right now, all we'll do is just select all of these tables one by one and load them in. Right, very brief overview of Power BI whilst we're here. Report view, now this is your dashboards view. Table view is a way for you to then view your tables. And model view is where you can then view the data model, which is actually really important and we'll get to in a second. And then lastly, there's DAX query view. So this is where you can write functions to query your data. DAX here being a library of functions and operators. So within Power BI, if we go back to these, this model here, you can see that it's automatically created a model. Now what it does is it tries to get similar column names, for instance, and say that, oh, this must come from here, that must link to there, such that then if you run queries or filters that it's able to, to match things together. Right. 
Now this is important because you can get, say here, address linked to this customer address table. So if you were to filter, say, by city, that you could then get that reflected in your customers. Now it's pretty messy. If you're looking at it here, you can't really see much. One thing to note is that these are your tables and these are the relationships. This is the direction of the relationship. And this is, you know, whether it's one to one, one to many, many to many, whatever it may be. The star indicating many, one being one. So for instance, here in the relationship between a customer and an address, one customer can have one address and one address can have one customer. Now, does that sound about right? Possibly not, because you have multiple customers with the same address if they live at the same place. And so what we can do here is if we go up to the top, we can see manage relationships. And that's a much better way to see it. There's the auto detect button, which if we click that, it won't change anything because these are auto detected. There we go. But what we can do then is for that address one, for instance, it's customer address to address. So if we go customer address to address, it's one to one. We would probably say that actually, in our case, let's say that that would actually be one to many. And then for the cross filter direction, we can have both. Now this is just, as you can tell, filter direction. So you could do just one way, meaning that if you're filtering here, it reflects there or vice versa. So we'll click save and that's fine for us. Another thing to note just before we move on to the next one is that an important concept for data engineering, but we'll not cover it in this because this is more about just using Azure for data engineering, is fact and dimension tables. Fact tables essentially contain quantitative data for analysis, whilst dimension tables contain descriptive attributes which are related to the data in the fact table. And so here's a good example of it here, where the fact table has the foreign keys and then these have the primary keys. So there's different locations. This will just say this item is in this location. Then in the location, here's the contact person, where it actually is, blah, blah, blah. So you'll get the gist. And so that's why these relationships are so important. So anyway, if we go back to our report, let's actually build out a little report. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the UI. So here are all the things that you can drag and drop into your report. So different types of graphs, etc., and then a slicer here, which is a filter. And here is all your data. So if you click open any of these tables, it will show you all the columns within the table with an indicator as to what the key is. So first thing we'll add is a card, which is this here. So we click it, it'll pop open a card here. And we have these two parts here, which are fuller analysis, which we're not gonna use, formatting the visual, and then the visuals here and the fields that you need for it. So if we click on ours here, and then we can click on field, what we can do is let's add product ID. Drag that into field. And you can see here it's automatically chosen count. Now you can do a different ones, so you can do sum for instance, but in this instance, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you sum it? Whereas you count it, you can then see count of product ID. What we can do here is switch off that category label that's that count thing there, switch that off. We'll go to general and we can turn on a title. And then we can call this number of products. And then you can see the title pops up there. And then you can do all of this stuff here to change what you want it to be. So colors, background color, blah, 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 which type of heading. So now we have that card, let's Control C, Control V. And in this one, let's change this here to the sum of sales. So if we X that out on the left here, let's go to sales order detail. And we can see line total. Let's drag that in. And it says sum of line total. So it's kind of getting the gist as to what, what it is. And so sum of line total, if we go into the visual, go to general, title and we could change this here instead to total sales. So we have two cards, we have a number of products card which we can use this here to change size and stuff. 
And then we have the total sales card. Do that there. Something like this, just for examples as to what you can see. So now if we open back up the context, so we'll go to business rec. Right, so if we come back to the business request to see what's actually creating this dashboard, let's have a look. So, blah, 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 dashboard. This dashboard is provided inputs into sales by gender and product category. Showing total products, total sales. Clear gender split amongst customers. Filter by product category and gender. So we can unhighlight that because it's captured in the below more effectively. Let's use a friendly interface for the based queries. So we're showing total, right? So we've done that. Now we want to be able to filter by category and gender. And they want to see actually a clear gender split amongst customers as well. So let's first we'll do a gender split so we have some visualizations going on. So we've got Power BI. Let's pick a donut chart here. And in this donut chart, let's do by if we go to customer, we can try and infer which gender they are based on their title. So if we click title here, we move that into values and then another one in details and what that will do now is that will show us the different titles so here you can quite clearly say that it would appear based on titles that the likelihood is we have majority male customers but we have a variety of products of 295 so which products so this is where we could add in our filter so if we go to slicer oops Control Z that, Control Z again, let's click out here, we'll create a slicer, let's create two of them, so we'll expand this, make it a bit bigger, this is not for <laughs> to learn how to do any visualisation or best practices, this is just so you can see what's happening, so in here let's do one with title, so we'll drag that into field, then we'll do another slicer, just for sizing, whoops, we'll Control C and V, do the same thing, just going to line it up. And in this one, uncheck that, we'll go to product, category, and we'll go to name. And now we have a variety of product categories. So let's move these two here over. We'll move this title one up here, give it a smaller. And then we'll do this and we'll make this categories bigger since there are a load of categories. So now in this visualization, what we could do is we could say, what about breaks? What's our split for breaks? So you can see here that breaks affects here. So there's two products for breaks and they total $830 say, dollars or pounds. But you can see that it's not affecting this. Now that's because of the importance of the model view. Because if we go back to model view, what we we'll see here is that there are, is no connection between customers and category, I suspect. And so if we come back to these relationships, you can see the customer is all alone, not get a relationship to anything. And that would be why when you update the customer, it's not affecting this. And when you update this, it's not affecting there. So if we go back to relationships, manage relationships, Yours might be different because last time mine looked completely different to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to scrap all of them and then I'm going to create some new relationships and you can pause the screen and either check yours looks like this or yours might work out the box or you can pause the screen and create them yourself. Right, and there we go. If we click close, go back to the report. So now in here, let's make sure that's back on category. If we click breaks, you can see that that's now reflected in both or all three of the products, sales and the chart. And the same up here with title, if we change the title, changes that. So if we say, for instance, let's say, let's scroll, let's just pick something random, pumps, two products, no sales, 
Panniers, one no sales, locks up. Not really selling much, are they? So mountain bikes, there we go. And there's a split here. So we can see that it's 87.5% Mr. Title. So 87.5% male gender, likely, because it's inferred. And up here we can change it. So let's say we want to see the total sales products that are bought by Mr. Click that. 20, 150k total sales. So there we go. We've now loaded the data into Power BI and we've created a very simple dashboard. So now that we have the dashboard we want, we can then save this as whatever we want, right? Whatever it is, and it saves it as a Power BI workbook. But we can also share or export it. So if you share it, someone else can then access the file, right? Or what we can do is we can export or publish it. So if we export it, we can do it a PDF to send to people, or we can actually publish it to Power BI. And when we publish it, we will then get a link we can follow, which will then send you to this dashboard where you can interact with it. So if you wanted someone to have a copy of it, an interactive copy, you would send them that published share. Whereas if you just want them to have a PDF, you can export it. Or if you want to share so they can edit it, you can share as well. Now in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the pipeline and we're going to create a trigger so that this runs automatically. Because as here it says, we're going to do up-to-date accurate data. So we're going to edit this pipeline or add a trigger which schedules for each day. And then we're going to go to Active Directory and we're going to ensure that only specific people can access specific resources. And I'm going to show you that just so that you have a, an overview because we won't need it for this specific project unless you know, you're know you gonna use this basis to build something bigger on. So anyway, any questions, comments, queries, as usual, put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode.